What do you do when the whole world feels crazy and it seems like nobody cares about the Lord or people who are serving God with everything in their being? That is exactly what we're going to be talking about today on the podcast. We are looking today at Psalm 26, 40, 58, 61, and 62, and then 64. So as always, go ahead and go read these Psalms for yourself or stick around and listen to the reading if you're listening uh, on the podcast format. Um, today, what I'm going to do is just j- dive us right into Psalm 61 and 62. When I read over these group of Psalms, these are the two that really stuck out to me. And I was pretty interested in them. Psalm 61 is pretty short. Um, but one of the things that it starts off with is talking about, um, the psalmist's heart is faint. Like he is wore out. He's sad about what's going on. I think you get the feeling that he's frustrated or confused. And then Psalm 62 actually gives even more context to the world that the psalmist is living in. Both of the Psalms, 61 and 62, have this feeling of, I think I'm the only one that cares about the Lord. I think I'm the only one that's being faithful. And I think the whole world is crazy around me. Um, Psalm 62 actually says, put no trust in extortion. Set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. This is towards the end of that psalm. But you get the feeling that these are some of the things that the writer is seeing in the world around him. And I think it's probably fair to say we see a lot of these things today, right? Like there are plenty of people who are enriching themselves by illegal means, by ungodly means. And I think in a lot of ways I can connect with this psalm. Because there are days when I feel exactly the same way. You look at the world and you think, man, like, who is taking Jesus seriously? Who is concerned for what the Lord wants? Um, I feel like sometimes probably, you know, there's, there's that story where Elijah is just totally wore out. And he's like, God, I don't think anybody loves you anymore. And God's like, dude, there are so many people that have not bowed down to Baal. Like, you kind of need to chill out. All right. And so... These Psalms to me today are a little bit of a reminder of what it means to take refuge in the Lord. Uh, That term is actually used in both 61 and 62, that God is our refuge and our strength. So what do you do when you feel faint, when you feel tired, when you feel like nobody cares about what the Lord cares about? You take refuge in the Lord. Um, Fun fact, that's exactly what Elijah had to do. He had to take refuge in the Lord. He went to a silent, quiet place, and God fed him and cared for him uh, because he needed to to take refuge in the Lord. So I'm curious uh, what that looks like for you. I know for me, refuge in the Lord, like, yes, daily Bible reading is so important. Yes, prayer is so important. I think fasting is super important. Um, But when I get like, tapped out and I feel like I am pulled to the full extent of who I'm in and I can't take anything else. A lot of times I got to go to the woods. I know that sounds kind of goofy to some of you maybe, um, but there is something about being in the peacefulness of the woods, the forest, uh, where I feel really close to God and I feel like God can refresh me um, and draw me even closer to him. So there are times in my life where I feel just crazy, you know, whether it's work stuff or ministry stuff or family stuff. Um, and I gotta, I gotta go to the woods. My wife actually knows like, Hey, I gotta go do some hunting. I gotta go do some fishing. Uh, I gotta go on a hike, uh, because I just feel like I'm distant from the Lord. And I think to take refuge in God is partially what that means. Like to know how you relate to God, to know how you draw yourself closer to God and to be able to do those things. I'm not by any means saying that all of you need to become hikers or hunters or fishermen. I'm just suggesting that it's, it's pretty cool to try to discover ways uh, that you connect well with the Lord. Uh, There's actually a book about that called sacred pathways, where there's different ways that different people connect with the Lord. And it's not some kind of weird new agey thing. It's just recognizing that all of us are made uh, unique. We're made differently, and so there are different ways that we connect with the Lord. And so for me, going to the woods is fantastic. Uh, Actually, sitting in silence and solitude is fantastic. I know some of you probably think that sounds like torture. Um, But taking refuge in the Lord 
is super important. And when we take refuge in the Lord, um, he hears us and he cares for us and he does not allow us to be shaken. Look at Psalm 62, uh, verse 1 and 2. For God alone, my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will all of you attack a man to batter him? Like a leaning wall or a tottering fence. They only plan to thrust him down from his high position. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. This is him talking about the world that he lives in again. That this is an, an evil world that enjoys attacking people who are kind of wiggly, not super firm. Uh, they enjoy lying. They enjoy cursing. Like this is not a happy place to be. But when we seek the Lord's presence, guys, when we seek the Lord's presence, he is our rock and our salvation. Uh, it was a couple days ago we read that he will not allow the righteous to be moved. Uh, when you when you have faith in God, he takes care of you and he's not going to let you be shaken, even though the world around you seems crazy. And I can say, like, I have I've seen that in my own life. Uh, I've seen that in the lives of people around me. I see that like people become so faithful when they're dealing with very, very difficult circumstances, very trying situations. And I think it's because when you draw near to the Lord, uh, he takes care of you. He is your rock and your fortress and you don't have to be afraid and you don't have to be shaken. And so I don't know what that looks like for you today. Uh, what I would love to do for you today is if you are dealing with difficult things personally, like there's something in your mind that's like, man, this is tough and I don't know what I'm going to do about it. Make sure that God is your refuge and your strength. Maybe you need to find some way to reconnect with the Lord or draw closer to the Lord through one of those sacred pathways. Um, another thing that is a helpful reminder, like it, it, it's probably not a surprise to all of us that culture seems pretty crazy. Like it seems like the world is not living for God's honor. Surprise, surprise. Just like when the psalmist wrote this, the entire world was not living for God's honor. So this is not a new issue. Um, but if you watch the news or if you hear a story, you know, in your town or your community that is concerning, if you hear news coming out of your local high school that seems concerning or college that seems concerning, take refuge in the Lord, right? So many times uh, we want to fight against it. Uh, we want to, we want to, talk about it. We want to um, just just show our concern for it. And those are all good things. But I think the first thing that we need to do is make God our refuge and our strength. Go to the Lord. Understand that he will not let you be shaken. Understand that we are but a breath. That's what uh, Psalm 62 verse 9 says. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up, they are together lighter than a breath. That basically means like before God, our lives are not really that much of anything. Like before the Lord of the universe, our lives are not a whole lot of anything. We're going to be here for just like a quick vapor of time. And a lot of the things that cause us to feel shaken do not allow God to feel shaken. So the things that we are concerned about, like God is concerned about those things, but he's not worried about them to the degree that we are, which is why it's always amazing to make God our refuge and our strength, our help in times of trouble, our rock and our salvation. So my encouragement to you, kind of the your part for today, is whatever that looks like for you. Maybe it's you want to spend some more time reading the word. Maybe you want to you know, listen to this podcast to make sure that the Bible is regularly part of your day. Uh, maybe it is you need to make more intentional time for prayer. Just the other day, uh, we were reading through one of David's Psalms where he talked about seeking the Lord morning, noon, and night. Maybe you need to be more intentional about when you're praying to the Lord and actually making time to hear from the Lord. Like, do you pause and ask God to speak to you while you're praying to him? Or maybe you need to go to the woods, right? Maybe you need to just clear your mind of your distractions, of your frustrations, of your concerns, and really seek the Lord in that sacred pathway that you have, that way that you know you connect to the Lord, uh, to hear from Him and experience Him so that you can be refreshed by God being your refuge. We'll be back again tomorrow. Tomorrow we are jumping back into Second Samuel. So we'll see you then.